Today I'm going to review Energy and Civilization, A History by Vaclav, Vaclav Smil. I hope I pronounced that right. So Vaclav Smil, he's an interesting author. Uh, he's Bill Gates' favorite author, which is, a, I guess that's a pretty good accolade to have to your name if you're a nonfiction writer. Um, that's kind of why I picked up this book, because I heard about the author uh, through like reading Bill Gates' recommendations. Uh, so I went ahead and I picked up this book to, uh, you know, give the author a try, and I was really surprised. Uh, I really enjoyed this book. Um, Vaclav Smil, he's not a traditional nonfiction writer. Uh, he kind of blurs the line between academic writing and, like, popular nonfiction writing. Uh, he puts way too many numbers and formulas and a lot of technical details into his work. S something like you'd find in academic writing a lot more. But the way he approaches topics and the way he explains it, it's more a uh, kind of general audience or a, a popular audience. It's a really interesting mix. It's kind of, yeah, it's like one step up in like detail and technical information from a normal nonfiction book, which is really interesting because uh, what he's talking about uh, is so fascinating. So in this book, he's following the history of energy. And he's not, he's not taking some boring route where he only looks at energy sources. Really, in this book, he's looking at how humans gather energy or how we capture energy and how we convert that energy to a useful output and he does this over a really broad range of activities uh, from farming to windmills to water wheels uh, sailing and then he just moves on through uh, all kinds of technological innovations so the impact of different uh, like plowing instruments and how oxes can uh, compared to horses and how that impacted people. Uh, he just he goes into a, a bunch of details about the evolution of all these items, all these uh, machines and, and all these ways of capturing energy. And he just follows that throughout time uh, until the modern era. The book is really heavy on details. Um, it's really fascinating because he talks about all these individual machines and how they worked. Um, and that's fascinating. It did kind of seem like the book should have been made into like a documentary. Um, a lot of the things he's describing you really need to see visually to really understand. And there's a few pictures in the book, but it's not that great. It's not unbelievable. But it's still really interesting because, I mean, he shows how the evolution of water wheels impacted how much power people were gathering uh, through, uh, through the wheel then how they were able to convert that into more food or you know whatever they were using it for and it, it's such an interesting story because there's innovations in fuel types and then how we capture the fuel uh, how we capture the energy from that fuel source and then how we're converting it into a useful output and how we use those outputs uh, the whole story is really interesting and he he took such a broad view of that story he he talked about um, a lot of in interesting uh, angles to the energy story that I haven't really heard that much about before. A lot of the, like, how much energy were hunter-gatherers using and, and how much energy are you converting uh, with corn from the sun and then how does that compare to, like, leafy plants that, and other things pe people might eat. Um, it's really interesting because there's a lot of details in there you normally won't hear about. I thought the most interesting part of this book was the beginning, like kind of like the first half. It's talking about everything from hunter-gatherers all the way to kind of midway through the Industrial Revolution. Uh, that was where the book was the most fascinating for me because he has so many details that I didn't know, uh, stories I hadn't heard before, just about how all these kind of medieval machines were used to capture uh, like windmills, to capture wind power with windmills, uh, water with the water wheels. Uh, sailing ships, just all that stuff. There's a lot of innovation that happened that ultimately didn't go anywhere because we don't use uh, water wheels like that anymore. But we do use like uh, water turbines for uh, and, like dams. But overall, a lot of that technology kind of it, it's 
started out rudimentary and it got much more complex and big and efficient, but then it kind of all died out. And so going back and hearing the story of all those innovations, uh, things that happened in the past that, that, that died out, that was all really interesting for me. And uh, that was my favorite part of the book by far. I definitely, I like the book enough that I'm going to go read more books by this author. Uh, I was I was pleased enough with uh, the book and his approach that I'm confident enough that, you know, hearing his take on other subjects will be really interesting. A word of warning for you, though, if you do pick this book up, there's a lot of numbers in it. Um, because it's kind of a semi-academic book, a lot of his other books are really pricey and kind of almost priced more like academic books. But in his writing, there's a lot of numbers. There's a lot of kind of calculations. And if you have a hard time following that logic or you're not very number savvy, you might be overwhelmed with the amount of numbers in this book. So watch out for that. It's definitely, it's an entirely different book from other history of science books that I've read, whether it's like Origin Story, A Short History of Nearly Everything, Siddhartha Mukherjee's books, The Gene and The Emperor of All Maladies. Uh, a lot of those types of books, and I know there's a bunch of other ones I'm forgetting now, but those types of books followed like the people and and created a really more cohesive narrative story. This is a, a very technical look at the vast series of innovations that humans have come up with to to capture and use energy for our purposes. And if you want to know all the grimy details of that story, uh, this is the book to pick up. And I think if that's what you're interested in, you will really enjoy this book. So I hope you guys like this review. I've got more reviews coming soon. I just started reading Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. Uh, I've read that book a long time ago and it was very good. Uh, so I'll have that review coming soon, week or so, hopefully. So like, subscribe, and stick around, and hope to see you guys in the next one.